today is a bit important topic so it's about skin and soft tissue infections so we are two the giants of the microbiology department that is the staphylococcus and streptococcus i'll be taking today so it's going to be a little bit of long lecture so i hope it will be interesting for you today i hope i will make it interesting for you actually okay so now i'll be telling about something about staphylococcus infection actually uh, staphylococcus is under a, uh, a family called staphylococcus strepto uh, is micrococcus so i'll be telling about the family first this is a gram positive cocci two families that is micrococcus and streptococcus it is differentiated by a catalyst test called catalyst test in catalyst test the micrococcus are catalyst gram positive it's in microscopy of the the uh, micrococcus you see that the in gram positive test is arranged in clusters clusters means it's like grape grapes you have seen right lattice while the streptococcus family are catalyst negative streptococcus family includes the streptococcus uh, species uh, uh, organism they are catalyst negative and they but they are gram positive it's arranged in tetrads tetrads means like chains four or more chains the next is i'll tell about the micrococcus family it comprises of genera that is the micrococcus and the staphylococcus whereas in micrococcus species it is a skin they are mostly skin commensals it's not associated with any human infection they are arranged in tetrads whereas the next is a staphylococcus species there is a one which i want to say staphylococcus aureus is under that is arranged in clusters that's what i said grape like is among the staph species staph aureus is the most pathogenic it produces coagulase enzyme is a basis of is a basis of coagulase test next is staph aureus infection staph staphylococcus aureus is catalase positive remember these things these are very important because they last you to differentiate between staph and strep uh, so a uh, staph is catalase positive it is coagulase positive but it's oxidase negative it is facultative anaerobe facultative anaerobe means during uh, absence of oxygen it switch to the organism switch to fermentation or anaerobic respiration if oxygen is not available staph aureus is non motile it is non sporing and is occasionally it has a capsule so staph is catalase positive oxidase uh, negative coagulase positive the facultative anaerobe it is non motile it is non sporing and is occasionally capsulated staph means bunch of grapes on uh, nutrient agar it's golden yellow in color in blood agar it shows beta hemolytic colonies i'll come to beta hemolysis later i'll tell you what why is called beta hemolysis then it this staph aureus easily grows on basal media peptone water nutrient agar there's a basal media includes the peptone water the nutrient agar the nutrient broth the staph aureus is able to grow on 10.5% sodium chloride concentration that is so uh, the, when the uh, culture media has 10.5% sodium chloride it's able to grow on that then this virulence factor is very important in staff uh, chapter because they might ask you what are the virulence factors and how does the virulence factor uh, play in a role in causing infection in humans so these are the virulence factor cell wall of staff contains thick peptidoglycan layer and tycoic acid staff aureus has also protein a and clumping factor cell wall associated factors include peptidoglycan tycoic acid cell surface adhesions and protein a so the cell wall associated cell which are the factors which are virulence in cell wall associated factors are there is a peptidoglycan tycoic acid the cell surface adhesions and the protein a so then next is toxins which are the toxins produced by staph aureus the membrane active toxins are as a hemolysin alpha beta gamma and delta then leucosidin or pantan valentine toxin then epidermolytic toxin or exfoliative toxin then enterotoxins enterotoxins are the toxins which affect the enteric tract as the gi tract then next is toxic shock syndrome toxin the toxins include membrane active toxins as a cell membrane active toxins the two types of cell membrane active toxins are hemolysin Alpha, alpha beta gamma and delta that's what i told like beta hemolysis beta hemolytic streptococcus 
So come to the industry side, I'll tell you how it is called the beta hemolysis. The next is leucosidine or pantene valentine toxin, there are two membrane acid toxins. Then is the epidermolytic toxin or the exfoliated toxin. Then next is enterotoxin. Then next is tox syndrome toxin. So there are four main toxins, which is the causing the virulence factor. Then next is enzymes. There is the extracellular enzymes, which are causes, which are is the virulence factor. That is the coagulase enzyme. Each stable thermonucleus enzyme, the next is deoxyribonucleus enzyme or DNS enzyme. The next is staphylokinase, that is the fibrinolysin enzyme. The other enzymes include the hyaluronidase, then lipase and protease. So the main enzymes are coagulase enzyme, then heat stable thermonucleus, so heat stable thermonucleus. Then deoxyribonucleus, staphylokinase, which is a fibrinolysin. The next is uh, others like hyaluronidase, lipase and Protease. Next is cell. I'll come to the individual virulence factors. As a cell wall associated pro, uh, factors, cell wall factor factor. First one is the peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan, uh, the layer is thick. It confers the what's the function of the peptidoglycan? Is it confers the rigidity to the cell wall and maintain helps in maintaining the shape of the cell wall. It induces the inflammatory response and also has endotoxin like activity. So. Peptidoglycan is present in the cell wall, so you just you know you should know that it confers the rigidity to the cell wall and helps in maintaining the shape of the cell wall. It induces an inflammatory response and has an endotoxin-like activity. Endotoxin-like activity, I'll tell you later. The next is ticoic acid. Ticoic acid is made up of ribitol phosphate polymers. It helps in addition of the cocci to the mucosal surface of the intestine or any other mucosal like pharynx mucosal surface, uh, nasopharynx or the mucosal. Uh, Nasis near or uh, in the nose, musical surface of the nose or the throat. It uh, ticoic acid is the one which helps in the addition of the cocci to the mucous surface. It the one more fun main function is it inhibits opsonization. That is, it inhibits the phagocytosis. That is, uh, by the macrophages or the other uh, antibodies, it inhibits the uh, opsonization, thus helping the bacteria to uh, the sulfurous to grow within the pharynx or the mucous surface. So. Uh, ticoic acid is made up of ribitol phosphate polymers. It helps in the addition of the cocci to the mucosal surface. It inhibits oxygenization, that is phagocytosis. The next is the cell surface adhesins. Cell surface adhesins includes the clumping factor that is a bound coagulase. It bound clumping factor bound coagulase is attached to the cell wall. It is a fibrinogen binding adhesin. It is responsible for the slight coagulation reaction. So there is a test which differentiates the staphylococcus from the other bacteria. There is a type 2 coagulase and a slight coagulase. In slight coagulase, the main factor is a clumping factor, the bound coagulase, which makes the staphylococcus test positive. So this test I will again explain in the end. There is a lab investigation diagnosis area. Second, I will explain you there and you will get to know about it. So there is a clump factor called, so in the cell surface adhesion, there is a factor called clumping factor or the bound coagulase. This bound coagulase is attached to the cell wall. It is a fibrinogen binding adhesin and is responsible for the light coagulation reaction. And next is the protein A. This one I think so. I had uh, in the few, in the before classes in the skin infection, I told a, a about uh, a test called protein A test. Yeah, so this is this why we do the protein A test because the protein A is present on the cell surface. So uh, I'll tell about protein A. It's a fold to kilo Dalton polypeptide. It is encoded by SPA gene. It is present in 90 to 99 percent of the human star strain. It has many biological properties like it is anti-complementary property <coughs> and anti-phagocytic property. It mediates the coagulation reaction. That is uh, how it mediates the coagulation reaction is it binds to FC region of any immunoglobin G antibody. Now, I told you right there is a two regions for anti uh, immunoglobulins. One is the FAB region and the FC region. FAB region is the one which binds to the anti uh, what anti uh, antigen and down FC region is below one as a carboxyl group region. So they are actually uh, in this uh, the uh, the uh, protein A actually binds to FC region of the any immunoglobulin uh, G IgG uh, antibody, leaving a FAB region free which binds to the corresponding antigen present in the sample. So this is how the coagulation reaction is done. So about protein A is 
it is 42 kilo dialysin polypeptide is coded by a special gene called SPA gene. That's why the above in protein in S, I wrote the SPA. So that's a gene which is, is, is coded by. It is present in 90 to 95% of the staff which are infected to humans. It has many biological properties like it has anti complementary property, anti phagocytic property. So most of the times so this staph aureus escapes uh, phagocytosis. So you just remember anti phagocytic. Then you just remember that it mediates coagulation reaction. So it is binds to the FC region of any immunoglobin G antibody, leaving FAB region free. So once it binds to FC, so the FAB region is free. And this FAB region binds to its corresponding antigen, which is present in the sample, and just causes the coagulation reaction. So you got till now, right? Yes, sir. You have any doubt or anything, or is it confusing for you? No, uh, not really. I feel like it's like um, I can mark up. Or yeah, like you that. just need to know. Uh, see, I'll tell you if, if you just need to know the names of the uh, which are the virulence yeah. factor, know the names yeah. and you try correlating with the, like how I told you right now. See, protein A, it has SP, SPA. So, see, protein A is already there in that uh, gene SPA. PA means protein A. So, you yeah. just remember that gene is SPA gene. So like you try count uh, like coagulating. So you just imagine clumping factor bound coagulase. So what's the function of clumping? It should cause the clumping of the uh, whatever test it is doing. So it's a cell surface adhesin. So it's attached to cell wall. So it is fibrinogen binding adhesin. It's responsible for slight coagulation reaction. So you try correlate uh, correlate correlating with the headings and you'll get to know it's uh, you can remember easily in your mind. So when you write during the exam time also you can just it will just recite out if you correlate with each other. Okay. The next is toxins. So now I was telling about cell cell wall associated factors. So next time we're telling about toxins. The toxins are hemolysin. So now I will come to tell individually about hemolysin. There's the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And why they are called alpha hemolysin? Why they are called beta hemolysin? So alpha is called uh, alpha hemolysin is there uh, is a toxin. So why is called alpha? Because it is inactivated at 70 degrees Celsius, reactivated paradoxically at 100 degrees Celsius due to inactivation of a heat level inactivator at 100 degrees Celsius. So uh, once alpha hemolysin uh, toxin is heated, it gets inactivated at 70 degrees Celsius. But when you keep on heating up to 100 degrees Celsius, it gets reactivated because the inactivating uh, protein gets destroyed at 100 degrees Celsius. Then next is lysis, both sheep and uh, human RBCs. It lyses both sheep and the human RBCs. Next is beta hemolysin. Beta hemolysin is a sphingomyelinase. It lyses only the sheep RBC, but not the human or the rabbit RBC. It exhibits hold cold phenomena. Just you just need to know that it exhibits hold cold phenomena, nothing else. It is uh, not a, not so much importance for us right now. The next uh, toxin is leucosidin or pantene valentine toxin, or you can call as PP toxin. It acts synergistically with gamma hemolysing to damage the leukocytes, RBCs, and macrophages. So it actually it is uh, act, acting along with gamma hemolysing. So see synergistic activism means. They are both activated in combination, but not in individually. So once uh, leukocidin is activated, you have to imagine that the gamma hemolysis is also activated, and uh, hence the uh, the palatine valentine uh, the pantene valentine toxin and gamma hemolysis is called synergo hymenotropic toxin. That's what I said. It uh, if uh, pan PV toxin is stimulated, the gamma hemolysis also is stimulated along with it. You can't it stimulate individually. Next is, is capable of producing hemolytic and leukocidal activity. PV toxin is expressed on methicillin resistant staph aureus strain. As MRS strain is methicillin resistant staph aureus strain. Hence, it causes the community acquired pneumonia. So, they might ask you what strain is uh, responsible for the occurrence of community acquired pneumonia. Is a PV toxin which is expressed on the MRS strain which causes the community acquired pneumonia. The next is epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin. Epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin 
is also called as staphylococcal scale skin syndrome toxin that's the four uh, s so four s is staphylococcal scale skin syndrome toxin it comprises of two proteins that is the eta that is exfoliated toxin or epidermolytic toxin epidermolytic toxin a it is chromosomal and it is heat stable whereas uh, et toxin b is plasmid coded Whereas ETA is chrom uh, chromosomal coded, this one is plasmid coded, and it is heat labile. More often, this toxin, epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin, is seen in newborns and children than adults. It's seen in adults also, but it's more commonly seen with newborns and children. Receptors in stratum granulosum of the dermis. Two milder forms are seen. There is bullous impetigo or pemphigus neonatorum. Whereas two severe forms which are seen in newborns are called the illness is called as the Rittes disease if it is in newborns, while as in older patient it is called as 10, that is a toxic epidermal necrolysis. These are the four diseases which are caused by due to epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin. The two milder forms which are seen in humans uh, in uh, humans are bullous sympatico and pemphigus neonatorum. Whereas two severe forms, the illness which is seen in newborns is the writer's disease and in older patient it is called toxic epidermal necrolysis. An image of that I uh, will show you in the next slide, in the further slide. There is the epidermolytic or the exploitative toxin. It is called epidermolytic toxin because the staphylococcus calcium syndrome toxin actually infects the skin. Your manifestation are mostly skin manifestation. So it is called epidermolytic or exploitative toxin. The two toxins proteins which come uh, which are causing this uh, uh, manifestation are ETA and ETB. ETA is chromosomal coded and it is heat stable, whereas ETB is plasmid coded and heat labile. Next is enterotoxin. It's called enterotoxin because it infects the uh, GI tract. So uh, present in 50% of the staff strains. Is responsible or uh, responsible for staph food poisoning. It's a preformed toxin. Remember, enterotoxin is a preformed toxin, not like how that other toxins are. Thus, the since it's a preformed toxin, thus the incubation period is about one to six hours after. So you get infection soon after consuming the food. Serotyping is 15 serotypes are seen. That's A to E, G to P. Type A is the most common causing food poisoning serotype food most commonly involved are milk and its products then meats so this staph aureus infection which cause enterotoxin so most commonly seen associated with foods like milk and spirits products and meat and the most common food poisoning uh, food poisoning causing serotype is type a the incubation period is about one to six hours after consuming the food so you'll find that you'll get the symptoms of the disease within one to six hours the next is toxic shock syndrome toxin. Toxic shock syndrome toxin is a staph strain which have a phase coding of group 1 release. It's a toxic shock syndrome toxin. There are two subtypes of toxic shock syndrome toxin that is TSST1 and T2. Toxin has an association with tampon usage and other wound infection. Tampon usage is the tampon is a actually uh, is a uh, uh, in men menstruating women, they use a small ball like cotton uh, covered with gauze. So that is called a tampon. That uh, usually in uh, uh, olden days, people, uh, the women used to do, use that more commonly and they used to not change it frequently. So people used to get infected with uh, staphylococcal infection and cause and was suffer from toxic shock syndrome. So it is causes systemic illness. It causes systemic illness like how like it's like this infected tampon having staphylococcal infection enters the blood vessels and they cause the symptoms. The toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 is actually a staphylococcal enterotoxin that's enterotoxin F or pyrogenic enterotoxin which is a super antigen. Just note that the uh, toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 is actually a staphylococcal enterotoxin that is enterotoxin F. I told right, it has got few serotypes uh, A to uh, A to uh, A to E and T to P. So type A is the most common, but endotoxin F, endotoxin F is the one which is a toxic toxin and toxin, but it is not calculated as endotoxin because 
it causes toxic shock syndrome toxin like effects the clinical features the patient here presents with fever there will be hypotension there will be vomiting there will be diarrhea there will be myalgia there will be abdominal pain and erythematous rashes so there will be fever hypotension there will be vomiting diarrhea there will be myalgia pain and erythematous rashes the diagnosis is by the detection of toxic shock syndrome toxin by latex agglutination, agglutination test and enzyme immunoassay to detect the toxic shock syndrome toxin two tests are done the lactose agglutination test and the enzyme immuno acid so what is the treatment for the toxic shock syndrome toxin a toxin causes as toxin causes capillary leak aggressive parenteral fluid replacement and vasopressor to reserve, reverse the hypotension should be initiated at the earliest this is the symptomatic management that we give the iv fluids then we give vasopressor agent because you know what is vasopressor agent those are, those are the agents which increases the bp by causing constriction of the blood vessel so they causes reverse they reverses the hypotension then you have to examine for and remove any colonized foreign body example like vaginal tampons are there then remove the vaginal tampon clindamycin is the preferred drug that is a drug of choice for toxic shock syndrome toxin is given along with anti staphylococcal penicillin that is cloxacillin for mssa mothers methicillin sensitive staphylococcus aureus or vancomycin for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus for clindamycin resistance cases we give linazolid next is epidemiology part of the normal human is a staphylococcus is actually a part of the normal human flora most common site of colonization is anterior nasus and oropharynx the colonization site serves as a reservoir of future infection actually if you see like our anterior nasus and the oropharynx oropharynx already has the organism but this this colonization when it goes inside the mu more deeper into the mucosal surface it becomes infective rate of colonization is higher is also seen that this rate of colonization that is the increase in the number of staph aureus is mainly seen in higher in patients like insulin dependent diabetes hiv infected patients and patients who are undergoing dialysis injecting uh, drug abusers then individuals with skin damage leading cause of nosocomial infection is hospital healthcare providers so staph aureus infection is a uh, is leading cause of nosocomial infection nosocomial means hospital acquired infection that is the hospital is seen in hospital and healthcare providers so these are the different names of the uh, skin and soft tissue infections then musculoskeletal infections which are caused by staph aureus you can see staph aureus is a more uh, common various skin and soft tissue infections if it's uh, infecting the hair follicles or folliculitis the painful plastular lesions in the hairy uh, region is called parenchyma then carbuncle is most common seen in diabetic patients then abscess is actually collection of pus which appears painful and swollen it is seen in uh, the most common in diabetic patients again then i told empetigo then botrymycosis these are the examples of skin and soft tissue infections but musculoskeletal infections which includes the uh, osteomyelitis pyomyositis uh, then abscesses again then next is respiratory tract infections it causes pneumonia it causes empyema pneumothorax it causes nematocele then bacteremia and its complications then uti uti you also you can see most commonly in females staphylococcal uti and pyelonephritis and rarely uti is seen in instrumentation and insertion of catheter toxic mediated in uh, illness like staph aureus that is was toxic shock syndrome toxin food poisoning and staphylococcus calcium syndrome that is the forex syndrome then which is the infection associated with community associated methicillin resistant staph aureus and necrotizing pneumonia then uh, sepsis with waterhouse prediction syndrome or purpurea fulminans then necrotizing fasciitis so just uh, the i just kept put the chart because when are you free you can just go through it know the names they might put some symptoms or they might tell that this patient has this uh, abscess on behind or so carbuncle or behind and it's most commonly seen diabetic patients or people with you know, female using menstruation as uh, to using tampons they might ask you in the they they may give you extra clues in the symptom or like in the question at time this will be helpful other is not important right now the next is lab diagnosis on direct microscopy the gram positive cocci in chains you see that on microscopy you see that gram positive cocci are in chains 
or you can see in clusters also grape like the next is culture on culture this is i told like the basic cultures which is nudgan agar you see golden yellow pigmented colonies whereas on blood agar you see colonies with narrow zone of beta hemolysis beta hemolysis because it it reacts with sheep the rbc but it does not react with human rbc the next is selfy media that is the manitol salt agar is a selfy media the nutrient agar with 7.5% sodium chloride and phenol red is as acting as an indicator all stuff grows but aureus shows fermentation so actually in manitol salt agar is a selfy media because it selfy for staff aureus only because it shows fermentation whereas other all stuff just grows here you can find bubbles around the uh, staff aureus and it is selfy media yellow colored colonies are seen in manitol salt agar then other selective agars like salt milk agar and doodlums media they might ask you what are selective uh, media for staph aureus as a mantel salt agar the salt milk agar and the doodlums media this is how the gram positive staph aureus is seen under the microscopy you can see small small rounded shape staph aureus uh, uh, gram positive cocci challenging grapes or in clusters So this is how the nutrient agar, where you see golden yellow pigment with colonies. This is the uh, blood agar, which is showing beta hemolytic colonies of staph aureus. The so next is cultures via microscopy. Again, gram positive cocci clusters are seen. Then next is biochemical test. Biochemical test which we use is I told like is catalase positive. So catalase test is positive. It differentiates with streptococci, which is A negative, which is negative for streptococci. But coagulase coagulase test is is done to test to differentiate from coagulase negative staph aureus. So only staph aureus is coagulase positive, whereas all other is coagulase negative staph aureus. There are two types of coagulation test. There is a two coagulase test. It is for the free coagulase. Positive test indicates by the formation of clot that doesn't flow in test tube. You find that in the positive co two coagulase test. You find a white, thick-colored uh, fluid which doesn't flow. That is a tube coagulase test. It is for free coagulase and it is positive for staph aureus. It's white in color. Whereas in slight coagulase test, that is for bound coagulase, that is the clumping factor. So clump, you remember that slight coagulase is for clumping factor. So in order to clump, you should have bound coagulase. So the positive test indicates by the formation of coarse clumps. Have you have you done uh, this one right? Blood grouping, right? Pardon, Hello. Yeah, you have done blood grouping. Yes, we have done. Slide blood grouping, you do right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Do. In order to be positive, you see that there is a cause clumping, right? For the so, uh, when you put the D antigen. Yes. yes. Yeah, you find a cause clumping. That like same way in slide coagulase test, you find this clumping. And it will be instead of red color, it will be milky white in color suspension. Whereas if then is negative, right? You will find that there is no clumping and diffuse white in color. So positive test indicates cross clumping, whereas milky white suspension indicates negative. That is a slight coagulase test. Slight coagulase test is for clumping factor. That is a bound coagulase. Tube coagulase is free coagulase. In this, the uh, positive test indicates it will be have the the fluid will be very thick and white in color and it doesn't flow in test tube. So this is the example. In two coagulates, the post right side is the positive one, which is white in color. It is thick. It doesn't flow. Whereas in left side is negative. You see, this the flow. The fluid is not white in color. It's translucent and it is flowing above. Whereas in slide coagulates, down one, the positive one is on the left side, which is showing clumping. I told right, like in the same the blood test itself is it's showing clumping individual white clumps. Whereas in right side, diffuse milky white in color fluid is seen. It is negative. So you understood, right? Difference between uh, positive and negative of slide and tube coagulase. Yeah, yes. They might ask you, ask you spotters in lab. So that may, this is very important, right? There. Then next is bacteria phase typing. Phase type 8081 is most commonly involved in outbreaks in hospitals. It is known as endemic strain of Staph aureus. They might ask you, where, uh, which is the most common uh, typed? Uh, Most staph aureus which is causing hospital infection is the 8081 